People on. think that the antidote will be in restructuring. Have your views to restructuring changed? No, they have not changed. They have not. I presented a paper yesterday at the BC Akande Colloquium uh, on restructuring. I believe that, you know, we should uh, look at our federation and rebalance it. But, you know, we restructuring, constitutional restructuring is one thing. Restructuring our minds to just be objective about what is right and wrong is another. I am extremely sad about this uh, Chief Justice matter. I am very sad about it. Because if I am the Chief Justice and I write, I say that yes, I have this asset, I have these bank accounts, but I did not declare them, I would not even allow the CCB to, give, uh, to, to file charges. I would resign there and then to protect the institution that I had. Because the admission that I did not declare my assets, that infraction alone is enough for him to step down and protect the institution. All these uh, 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 court orders and uh, lawyers and all this is not helping the judiciary, it's not helping the legal profession, right, so, well, 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 it's not well, helping Nigeria. Well, we'll come back to that in a bit. Yes. Uh, there are some others who feel, well, yes, granted, you, just as you say, you may have seen his written statement, but there has to be a place where he can go and uh, the charges or the allegations proved against him is admitted. Yes. And for them, they think that that's an issue that, yes, it has to be determined. And once that is determined, no matter who it is, the law is the law, and that has got to be the case. And some mm -hmm. even say that there's a uh, court of appeal decision which has not been set aside, and so they have a question mm -hmm. with procedure. Are, are they wrong if they raise that? They are wrong. Uh, I think, again, they, you know, we, we, you know, depending on which side you want to be, Nigerians can be morally flexible, as I said. Um, look, the Constitution is clear. As far as violations of the Code of Conduct for Public Officers is concerned, the only institution allowed to try of, uh, to investigate violations is the Code of Conduct Bureau. Okay? The only institution allowed exclusively to deal with violations of the Code of Conduct is the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Okay? It's clear. The case that they're referring to in the Nganjiwa case was a case of judicial misconduct. It was a case of a judge that violated the Code of Ethics of Judges and he was taken to the wrong court because the disciplinary control of judges is vested by the same constitution in the NJC. So if a judge engages in disciplinary uh, in, uh, in judicial misconduct, professional misconduct, in the course of his duty as a judge, you should first take him to the NJC because it is easier for judges to determine if his conduct is above or below the standard before referring him to regular courts. That is the Nganjwa decision. In the same Nganjwa decision, because I got a copy just yesterday, on page 19 of the judgment, okay, the judge said, Obita, you know, by the way, that if a judge commits fraud or murder or so on, he will be referred not to the NGC but to regular court. So I don't know those that are quoting in Ganjua whether they have read the entire thing. They should go and read page 19 of the judgment because I have it. I read it yesterday night. Okay? So all the arguments being made, okay, that it should first go to the NJC and so yeah, on. But, but you also I quoted that same judgment. Some say that, well, the, the CCB, CCT, yeah. uh, the judge declared himself incompetent because the matter had not been referred to the NJC, and so they had to take no, a look at no, it no, first. No, 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 no. You, you don't get me, uh, Chamberlain. For violations of the Code of Conduct, it has to go to not to any person or authority, but the Code of Conduct Tribunal violations of the code of conduct for public officers not the code of ethics for judges okay now in the same in Ganjua case i'm saying the judge the the lead judgment said yes this judge ought to have been taken to ngc however if a judge engages in fraud dishonesty murder and so on regular crimes he will be referred to courts not NJC. NJC exercises disciplinary control over judges in the course of their duty. Okay? But people are reading that judgment to mean that if a judge walks into your house, kills your wife, rapes your daughter and walks out, he cannot be taken, arrested and taken to a regular court until the NJC, his own peers, determine that he should be tried. No, that is wrong. It means that you are creating a special court for judges and judges are above the law. That cannot be 
the 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 the, 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 the intention of the well, law or the, the constitution. The, the thing about it is that there are different schools of thought. <laughs> That's yeah, why it yeah. is before the CCT now. So the lawyers are there. Doing yeah, the, 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 so the, the courts will decide it. But my concern, Chamberlain, is that Nigerian elites should have a consensus about the sanctity of institutions, and we should all protect our institutions, even when they seem to be against us. But do you think it's time for public officials, including maybe from the president down, to all make their forms, their CCT, uh, code of conduct forms public because they are, their emails, yeah. letters circulating that people yeah. have sought to get access to the president and the vice president's forms, look. and they gave a litany of excuses, the CCT, why that cannot be made public? Look, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the assets of public officials should be published. Everyone should publish his uh, asset declaration. And the president has published this, as far as I know, and the vice president, when they took office. They are yeah. of forms? Yeah, they have. They have published, they, they, they have declared, they not only declared the asset, they I have... I thought they, they declared it to the CCC, not they, uh, they, for they, public they, consumption. They have, made, they have made it public. My, 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 my own code of conduct forms are already, like, because there is a litigation, it's already in the public domain. Do you think that so, some... some so I, I, think, I think it should be a requirement of the law, not optional. Right now it is optional. Yeah. Mm. But I think it should be a legal requirement that, okay. upon okay. assuming office, everything should be published. But, but, but no some people fear, that. some people fear that um, uh, politicians will feel uh, being victimized or should I say exposed to the public if they have to go through the process of uh, uh, feelings uh, from CCP1, for instance, yeah, and, yeah. and making it public. That is, is that the case? Yeah, that is the logic behind the, 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 the current position of the law that you file it with CCB, but it's optional for you to publish it, okay? Because, you know, those that wrote that part of the Constitution felt that, you know, it will unduly expose people. But my argument is, if you put yourself out to lead people, you should be ready for the maximum scrutiny. Mm. So I don't think it's an issue. I think we have reached in the 21st century a point where everything should be laid bare. Okay. We should publish everything, let everyone know everything and challenge everything. You want to lead people. They should know what you have when you came into office. They should also know what you have when you leave office. I have no issues with that at all. But right now, that is not the position of the law. The position of the law is that you file with CCB. Of course, you can use the Freedom of Information Act to demand for it and give credible reasons, okay, but uh, it's not a requirement that you publish it. But many public officers have freely on their own published their assets declaration. In 2015, uh, we went through the elections. Yeah. Uh, it went, uh, for, for a lot of people, it was free and fair, and it went very well. The yeah. process comes to question again, now that uh, the president did not assent to the uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Mm. Do you think that perhaps we would have advanced the course of our democratic process if Mr. President had ascended to that bill? I, 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 I am I'm indifferent to it. I have looked at the provisions of the amendment, uh, amendment uh, bill. Uh, there is nothing there that substantially changes what is in the Electoral Act, frankly. Uh, should the President have assented to it? Personally, I think he should have. Okay? But that's my personal opinion. And I'm sure before he uh, took the decision to withhold assent of the latest version, no, the earlier version that tried to change the order of elections and so on, I was one of those that advocated that it should not be assented to because there was an agenda from the National Assembly that was not in the national interest. But the last version, uh, I, I did not see any uh, booby traps or any issues there. Uh, but I'm sure the president uh, got uh, properly advised before withholding assent. Uh, but I do not think that what I read, the few clauses that were amended, substantially uh, changes the electoral framework. Well, we're not going to have electronic transfers of results in yes. 2019. Yes. Does that bother you? It was, not in the, it was not in the amendment. Mm. The, amend, the, 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 the amendment bill that the president withheld assent has no provision for electronic transfer of results. It has no provision. Those that thought it was there should go and read the bill again because I read it over and over. It is not there. It's not in the, it's not in the bill. It does not stop INEC from doing it because the Electoral Act is flexible, allowing INEC to you know, uh, use technology, whatever it can, to advance the cost of fair, free, and credible elections. So INEC can still do electronic transfer even without it in the bill. But it's not specifically mentioned in the bill. So all Will, it be those tenable? Will that be tenable if they go ahead to electronically transfer uh, results and yeah, it, we don't it, have it. It's not a legal document it, yet. No, no, no. It, it, it is not everything that is in the act. The act gives INEC the power.
to determine methods, uh, procedures of elections and, and, and gazette them as regulation. And they have the force of law. Okay? So the INEC can do it. Should they do it? That's up to them. How, how safe is their system? Uh, how, how, you know, in these days of cybercrime and hacking and Cambridge Analytica and, and Russians and Trump, maybe we should take a second look at that, even if it is in the bill. But it was not in the bill. So those that were shouting, oh, you know, because of this electronic transmission of results, blah, 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 is out, have not read the bill. They are just shouting. Mm. Well, if I could come to Cardinal politics now, yes. even though I see people still talking about appointment of IGP, <laughs> they are still raising questions saying, oh dear, uh, is it that the president couldn't have looked to another region to appoint an IGP? I think they say again, a lot of AIGs yeah, you see, again, have to retire. Yeah, again, the region, religion, and ethnicity problem. You look, the, 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 the president has, has announced an acting IG, okay? That IG cannot become IG until the police council sits. What is the police council? The police council consists of the president and the 36 state governors. So if the 36 state governors or majority of them or even a few of them object, the man will not be IG because the IG is for the whole country. Okay? okay. So, Let, so, so, so for me, we should not be asking whether the IG is from this part of the country or not. We should be looking at his resume and asking whether he will be a competent and credible inspector general of police. And that's what I'll look at because we we'll receive his resume yeah, but and we'll, we'll, it, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have to yeah. make comments on him mm. uh, in the police council. Yeah, and if, and frankly, if I am of the view that he's not good enough to be our IG, I will stand on there.